Hey everyone. Uh, so we'll be starting here very shortly. I still see some people signing in uh, into Zoom. So as soon as we're ready to go, uh, we'll start. Um, I did want, of course, I want to welcome you to TAC and welcome you to Design Safe and give you guys a little bit of an update of what Design Safe's about, where we've been. And um, I'd also like to say that this is our final Design Safe webinar uh, for this season. The next ones will be uh, starting up again in the fall. And because of that, I was wanting to give you a little bit of a, a video of what somebody, one of our Design Safe users, has made about Design Safe. So, uh, without any further ado, I was let's go ahead and get ourselves started. So, like I said, welcome to Design Safe. My name is uh, Charlie Day. I am the director of training and professional development here at TAC. I'm also a Design Safe training lead. If you have any questions or have any need at all, or any of uh, or any suggestions for some future training, feel free to email me. That's my email on here is charlie at tac.utexas.edu. I also ask that we go ahead and mute all of your microphones. So if you have any questions during the presentation, there is a chat window available. On that chat window, you can ask any questions and we have people here at TAC uh, and people affiliated with Design Safe that can uh, answer your questions. Um, I saw a couple questions already fly by. One of them, somebody asking if you can record it. Yes, you may record this. Uh, we are also going to record this ourselves for Design Safe, and we will post it to Design Safe as soon as we're ready. Um, and one more time, by the way, if your microphone is currently uh, unmuted, if you could please mute your mic during the presentation, that would be fantastic. All right, so I was going to give you a quick update on what Design State's vision is. And, um, you know, honestly, I think we have a video that one of our Design Safe users has, has sent us that I think that will present a much clearer, uh, vi clearer idea of what Design State's vision was all about. So I'm going to go ahead and play that video for you guys right now. Let's see if I can cross it. All right, and let's go ahead make that big and share my screen again. All right, hopefully everybody can see this. I'm going to go ahead and play. It's about a minute long, but I think it'll give you a great idea on what Design Safe's about. Hey, Arisa, I hope the new job is going well. Have good news. The reviews for our paper are back, and we just have to update figures 6, 8, and 10 with the latest data. Can you do that within the next week or two? Well, Peter Lee has those data sets. I don't know what those data are. Can we ask Peter then? Do you have his contact info? He's in China. I know, but do you have contact info? No. Do you know where the data might be? Or where he left his lab notebook with all the metadata? The meta what? And a data, the labels for all the columns of data, the units for all the data, that kind of thing. Oh, well, maybe the wind tunnel computer? Maybe the portable hard drives? Maybe that white box in the grass student office closet? Maybe the Google Drive? All right. So that was kind of like a nice little tour of what Design State's all about. The idea is we want you to collaborate with your fellow scientists, with your fellow researchers. We want you to be able to take all of your data, store it in one place so everybody who needs access to it can get access to it. Let me go back to my presentation here. It's not showing up one more time. There we go. Perfect. So that's the idea behind Design Safe. We want you to be able to share your data through the Data Depot to all the different facets of your research and all the different facets of Design Safe. A, we're building a community, and part of that community means 
sharing data, sharing thoughts, being able to collaborate uh, across different mediums. So the main idea behind Design Center, and one of the main ideas behind TAC, the Texas Advanced Computing Center where I work at, is all about data. The idea is inside your data, there is a story. The sooner you can get to that story, the more people who you can help understand that story, then um, the more people recognize what it is you're trying to do. Um, so what do we, we, so Design Safe, there is a, a very big focus right now on helping you curate and publish your data, all right? The data models include the experimental, simulation, and other, and the hybrid, of course. And we can help you de develop additional models for your research community. Design Safe has an open data philosophy. There is no way, there isn't a, uh, a central control or a central format you have to follow. It is your data, you understand it the most. We want to have an open, uh, an open understanding, an open layout on how your data is set. But we will uh, give you suggestions and we will give you uh, pointers on how to get this data to be more easily understood by the rest of the community. So Dr. Maria Esteva, she's one of the researchers here at TAC, uh, she has set up virtual office hours to help you curate your data and get it ready for publication. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Central Time, uh, Maria has a Zoom meeting set up, and there's the address for the Zoom. You can always also find that on Design State's website, and then she can help you walk you through the design uh, curation, uh, design curation workflow, and get your data into Design Safe in a model that everybody understands. So in a nutshell, what happens is we define what the category tree is, what the data looks like, how, what the main uh, branches of your tree are. We will then assign those categories to the different files that sit inside of your uh, data set. And then from that, we can then publish uh, your project and publish the project and all your files that are, that are associated with that. Like I said, the, the, the data is at the heart of Design Safe. So the, the better we can get your data to be present, the better presentation we have for your data, the easier it is for other people to understand it. And Maria, she's fantastic to work with, and she's gonna be able to help you get your data in a Design Safe in a very easily understood format. To get your data into Design Safe, there's a couple different methods. We can you can use the Data Depot or Jupyter Notebooks directly. If you have a small number of files and they're somewhat of a small file size, so that's the easiest way to do it. You can also sync through Box.com, Dropbox, or Google Drive. The idea is you sync your folders from your laptop or your local machine to one of these cloud providers, and then you can get to Design Safe connect to those cloud providers and copy those files in. If you have a large number of, of data files, a large number of files and, and they're larger sized files, uh, we strongly suggest using Globus. Uh, a few months ago, we actually did a tutorial on using Globus. You might use that as a guide. We also have uh, the training guide for Globus linked here on these slides. And of course, these slides will be available in Design Safe's training repository. Uh, Globus is probably the best way of getting your data files from your local machine onto Design Safe. Um, and we have that entire structure uh, workflow laid out for you. And of course, those of you who are comfortable using uh, command, line or command line tools, uh, RSync and SCP are both available as well on getting your data to Design Safe uh, in an easy fashion. So the idea is to make your data count. We want, you, we want to help you formally publish your data sets and stable deposit, uh, data repositories into Design Safe. We can give you a, a DOI, which is a digital location, essentially. And it's not just a URL, but it's actually a, a DOI object that you then can cite directly, and we can then track those citations, and you can put those citations in your CV. And it helps you track on who's using your data, how your data has been used, and uh, who has been to basically taking your data and going to the next level with it. Part of Design Safe is to collaborate, and part of collaboration is sharing data sets. Uh, using a DOI, publishing your data set, allows you to monitor 
how many times your data has been referenced and therefore how well your data has been received uh, by the community. Okay, um, this is this kind of what is an example citation for your data set, how it looks, how it goes to, and that link takes you directly into Design Safe's data set. All right, so today uh, we're going to be talking about using OpenSeas Pi on Design Safe. Uh, OpenSeas is a widely used software framework for finite element analysis. Um, and for a wide, a wide range of scientific numerical modules that are available in Python. We have Michael H. Scott with us. Michael H. Scott is from the uh, Oregon State University. He is in the School of Civil and Construction Engineering. And uh, he is one of the core developers of the Open Seas framework. So he is one of the most knowledgeable guys you can come to when it comes to using Open Seas. And uh, Professor Scott's research and teaching interests include nonlinear structural analysis, numerical methods, and fluid structure uh, interactions. And so he is, uh, like I said, he, any questions about open seas you have, he is basically the guy to hit. And we are very pleased to have him today uh, to guide you through what using open seas pi is all about and how you integrate and use that in uh, Jupyter Notebooks. All right. So if you're all set, Michael, I'm going to go ahead and stop my sharing and I'm going to mute my mic and then open it up to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Can you everyone uh, hear me? Yeah, we can hear you just great. Thanks so much, Michael. Okay. Well, I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen. Um, and thank you everyone for attending today. And thank you for the introduction, Charlie. Uh, one second. Okay, does everybody see a uh, Jupyter Notebook on the screen? Or yeah, looks try great. To give a thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, so I wanted to go through uh, how to use OpenSeas Pi on Design Safe at the Jupyter Hub um, within Design Safe. Uh, so again, thank you for the introduction, uh, Charlie. Um, the the webinar today. Uh, is I'm going to cover some overview and overview and background of OpenSeas Pi, and then what models are available uh, within OpenSeas uh, Python version. The differences between OpenSeas Python and Tickle, and some of the differences between Python and Tickle in general, uh, and then go through an example uh, structural frame analysis, do a static pushover analysis, and then a response history analysis, and uh, then. If we have time, uh, talk about uh, running OpenSeas Pi in a terminal. Okay, um, and I've caught my first uh, spelling error. No spell check in uh, Markdown, but uh, there we go. Okay, so I don't have any PowerPoint slides. It's just all going to be here in a, a Jupyter notebook, um, so I don't have to switch between screens uh, when I run uh, some OpenSeas analyses or show you different codes. Okay, so kind of the background that I assume everyone has for this webinar is that you've used OpenSeas. Uh, you may not be a power user or anything, uh, but you've at least used OpenSeas before and you know what it's about. Also, I assume that you know some Python 3 code, okay? Uh, but again, not, not a lot, uh, but just some of the basics of Python 3. And then I also assume that you're familiar with using Jupyter Notebooks. Right? And if you're not, uh, I highly recommend that you uh, look into your notebooks. Uh, especially here on Design Safe, it's a, it's a great environment for uh, doing interactive Python with Markdown and other resources all all in one place. Okay. Okay. So the objectives for the webinar are, as I kind of alluded to already, but really three things: uh, show high-level differences between OpenSeas Pi and OpenSeas Tickle, aka OpenSeas. All right. So OpenSeas Tickle is not a thing. Uh, that's just uh, um, the original OpenSeas, uh, but I'll use OpenSeas and OpenSeas Tickle kind of interchangeably uh, for the Tickle version or the Tickle interpreter uh, within OpenSeas. Okay. And then show a simple integration of OpenSeas Pi analyses uh, with NumPy and PyPlot, which are two popular uh, Python modules or Python libraries uh, for numerical linear algebra as well as plotting. Okay. And then go through an example uh, without getting into too many modeling details. Right? Just kind of give you the high level view of 
here's how you do a, a simple frame analysis. Okay, so as, as Charlie touched on in the introduction, um, Open Seas is a widely used finite element analysis framework uh, for structural and geotechnical systems subjected to earthquakes and tsunami, tsunamis. Okay. Uh, the core of Open Seas is written in C++ with some Fortran solvers and constitutive models, but you know, mostly object-oriented uh, C++. And about 20 years ago, when Open Seas was making its way from being known as G3 into uh, Open Seas, uh, it was integrated with the Tickle uh, scripting language for model building and analysis. So Tickle is a pretty powerful string-based scripting language, but the syntax is quite awkward. There's a pretty steep learning curve for Tickle. Uh, you have to say things like set A5 if you want to set a variable to have a value of five or to do a mathematical mathematical expression, you have to put it in square brackets and then use EXPR to dereference the strings as numerical values. And then you use dollar signs to dereference strings uh, further. Okay, so a lot, a lot of uh, funky things, all right. Um, but again, Tickle's very powerful. Um, don't get me wrong, I don't dislike Tickle. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things with it. Uh, but for uh, learning programming languages, uh, it's, it's very difficult to, to learn. Okay. In addition, there's very few libraries available for Tickle uh, in terms of scientific programming for things like numerical linear algebra, plotting, uh, visualization, uh, and other things. Okay. But uh, Python uh, offers a very intuitive syntax and a very large ecosystem of scientific libraries. Okay, so kind of beg the question of, well, why don't we get OpenSeas working with, uh, with Python? Okay, so then a few years ago, uh, OpenSeas Pi was, was hatched. It was primarily the work of Dr. Minji Zhu here at Oregon State University. He did all the implementation of OpenSeas Pi uh, with some guidance uh, from Dr. Frank McKenna, who was the uh, original creator of OpenSeas and still uh, maintains open seas with the sim center and uh, within peer and other other efforts uh, through UC Berkeley okay but uh, dr. Zhu here at uh, Oregon State uh, did a lot of the heavy lifting for the open seas Pi okay and it's all built through the Python API uh, we kind of developed if you're interested in the multiple interpreter Architecture, uh, there's a paper here that uh, Minji, Frank, and I wrote about how we handle Tickle and Python uh, within OpenSeas, and then how even how we could extend it to uh, other scripting languages, say R, Ruby, or Julia, or whatever the, the flavor is uh, 10 years from now, okay? or even two years from now. Okay? But in terms of documentation, uh, there's, Minji has a nice website here uh, openseaspydoc.readthedocs.io. There's a, a link that's active uh, there with all the Python commands. And then also the OpenSeas wiki, uh, which is hosted at uh, Berkeley. Uh, all the commands described in the wiki are tickle format, uh, but as we'll see in a few minutes, the Python commands have the same order of inputs. All right, so the wiki is still a very good reference for uh, figuring out uh, OpenSeas commands, be it in tickle or, or Python. Okay, and then also this, this Jupyter Notebook I'm going through, uh, we'll post it uh, through DesignSafe along with the, the recording of the webinar uh, so that you can click the links and uh, have the information that is, is covered here in the, the notebook. Okay. okay, so what's available in OpenSeas Pi? Well, pretty much all the structural and geotechnical finite elements and constitutive models that you're used to for OpenSeas analyses are there. Okay, as well as all the analysis algorithms, equation solvers, and integrators, et cetera. Okay, uh, fix that. All right, and then uh, there's a few sets of Python commands that are in progress, i.e. we're taking the uh, commands for finite element reliability analysis developed by Terry A. Halkus, uh, now at uh, University of British Columbia, uh, getting those into the Python module. It's a current effort. And then also the structural fire analysis commands developed by Asif Usmani and his group at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, those are making their way into the Python module as well. Okay, so again, basically everything that's 
you can do uh, within OpenSeas Tickle, you'll be able to do in OpenSeas Pi. Okay. And then there's also uh, fluid structure interaction modules uh, using the particle finite element method, which again, Dr. Uh, Minji Zhu developed uh, within OpenSeas Pi. Those are also available within the OpenSeas Pi module, uh, but they're not fully available within the, the Tickle version of OpenSeas. All right, so there's a little bit of forking uh, within the capabilities of OpenSeas Pi versus OpenSeas, but it's basically everything that was available in OpenSeas is available in, open, in OpenSeas Pi, plus uh, all the FSI analysis, which could be a subject of a, another webinar in and of itself. Okay. And there's some references there if you're interested in the fluid structure interaction um, simulations within OpenSeas. Okay. Okay. So now um, moving on to how do we use OpenSeas Pi on Jupyter Hub at DesignSafe. First of all, OpenSeas Pi is a, a Python 3 module, uh, not Python 2. Okay. Um, if I may take the liberty of switching tabs here uh, quickly, I'm going to go over to my data folder or tab. This is my data within Jupyter Hub at uh, Design Safe. All right, if you go to New Notebook here in the upper right, you want to select Python 3. All right, there's Bash, Python 2, and R, uh, but OpenSeas Pi is a Python 3 module. Okay, so if you click on that, you'll get a blank. Uh, notebook, but this is the starting point from which you will uh, use OpenSeas Pi, or from which you can use OpenSeas Pi uh, within a Design Safe. Okay, so I'm going to click back to the webinar. Okay, so um, a couple short technical details. Uh, Design Safe's image uh, in the cloud contains a, a PIP or PIP installation of OpenSeas Pi. Okay, so this if you're familiar with the pip installs, um, this means that uh, you can install OpenSeas Pi locally on your own PC uh, very easily. Just uh, just one line command, uh, pip install OpenSeas Pi. All right, should do it. And that'll link you up to the correct Python versions. Uh, it'll work on Windows and Linux. Uh, the Mac OS is in progress. I think we figured that out. Uh, with the help from uh, Terry Halkus up at uh, UBC. Uh, I think he got that uh, uh, resolved for Mac OS. So um, pretty soon we'll have OpenSeas Pi on all three major operating systems. But again, uh, more details can be found at the uh, Read the Docs site for OpenSeas Pi if you're interested in local installs. Okay. But again, at Jupyter Hub, we would create a, uh, or Jupyter Hub on Design Safe create a Python 3 notebook in my data. And you want to keep the notebooks in your my data folder because uh, that's what's guaranteed to be backed up uh, after upgrades and other uh, house cleaning or cleaning house uh, at, uh, at design safe. Okay, everything in your my data folder is uh, protected. Okay, so here's a, so all the cells that I was working on up here were markdown cells and here's an actual uh, code cell within this notebook, all right? So this takes, the cell takes uh, raw Python 3 uh, code. But to use OpenSeas Pi, you would just import it like you would any other, any other module, all right? So import numpy, shorten it as np, all right? Import matplotlib.pyplot, shorten all that as plt, all right? And then you can import OpenSeas Pi .openseas, and we can shorten that down to, to OPS. Okay, so it's just the familiar uh, Python import syntax. Import x as y, all right, and then use y uh, dot whatever uh, throughout your uh, script. Okay, so then uh, then you can say things like ops dot wipe. All right, wipe's a familiar open seas command if you used that before, and tickle, and then you can create a model, basic model, ops dot model basic dash ndm two dash ndf three. Okay. So this should all look familiar, again, if you uh, build models uh, within OpenSeas Tickle. Okay, so before we get into more uh, scripting, all right, just wanted to show you the basic import and then the basic idea of uh, calling some functions, but I wanted to talk about the basic uh, command format for OpenSeas Pi, okay? 
So as you saw with the wipe and the model commands, it takes pretty much the same input sequence as all of the original OpenSea's tickle commands. Right? Uh, but the OpenSea's Pi syntax is not Pythonic for all you uh, Python purists out there. Uh, you'll probably notice that uh, the sending is Pythonic. Right? I'm not Pythonic. But uh, this arose from the effort to keep the input for OpenSea's Pi as similar as possible uh, to the OpenSea's Tickle version. And this makes the transition very easy uh, going from OpenSea's Tickle to OpenSea's Pi. Right? So, for example, uh, the Tickle code, you create a truss element in OpenSea's. You know, if you wanted to use variables, you could say, you know, set E 29,000, set A 23.2, then create a uniaxial material, dereference the E to give you uh, the mathematical value all right, of 29,000, then create a truss element with a tag, an I node, a J node, a material tag, which is 10, all right, and then an area, which is defined above as a native tickle variable. Okay. The equivalent Python code would be, you know, we could define two native Python variables, E equals 29,000, a equals 23.2, all right, much more natural syntax than uh, set E this, set A that, all right. And then we'd say OPS dot uniaxial material, single quote or double quote will work in Python, uh, elastic, and then give it a tag and an E value, all right. So it takes the same order of input that we have up here, okay. So transitioning is, is very easy if you're familiar with OpenSea's tickle. And then the element, Again, take a string all right, for the type of element, and then the tag, the nodes, the material tag, and the cross-sectional area, okay? Then scoping uh, within, if you're familiar with Python, uh, scoping is a little bit uh, funky with the tabs, all right? Uh, we couldn't quite pull that off with OpenSea's Pi, all right? So for some of the uh, commands that use curly brace scoping, uh, within OpenSea's Tickle, we had to make a couple of minor changes. All right. So, if you're familiar with, for example, the section fiber sections within OpenSea's, you know, you would say something like in Tickle section fiber, and then the tag, and then open brace, patch layer uh, to your heart's content. All right, and then close brace um, there. Okay. But OpenSea's Pi doesn't use indentation for scoping of fiber sections. So instead, to make things easy, all right, we just do away with scoping in terms of braces or indentation and all the patches and layers that you define in your OpenSea's Pi scripts just refer back to the most recent fiber section definition. So you can just give these things in sequence, all right, OpenSea's section fiber one, patch, layer, and those all map back to the most recent section, which in this case would be with tag one, okay? Same idea for load patterns. We do away with the curly braces for your reference loads. So you just define like say a time series and then a load pattern, plain load pattern. And then everything that comes after that pattern is a reference value that goes into that most recent load pattern definition, all right? So your loads, your element loads, your single point constraints, they all get mapped back to the last pattern, okay? But you still need to use indentation when you write loops, conditionals, and functions within native Python code, all right? Okay, a few other differences to be aware of between OpenSea's Pi and OpenSea's Tickle. Uh, the print command is reserved in native Python, all right? So we created print model to dump out all of the nodes, elements, uh, other information about the model within OpenSeas. If you are used to the, the print command in OpenSeas Tickle, that's now print model, okay? Uh, beam integration objects are required now for beam column elements, and they have their own tags, all right? So say for the force beam column element, you could define a section with a tag, a geometric transformation with a tag, and then you need a beam integration object also with its own tag. All right, so Lovato, Legendre, Hendredal, uh, there's about 20 of those things. Uh, you can blame me for that, okay? But then once you create the element, uh, force beam column, you have the element tag, inode, jnode, 
and then the transformation tag uh, nine let's say and then the beam integration tag eight all right which then maps back to the section uh, which in this case is one so again in some cases i'm using uh non-sequential tags just to to make a point um and also so not all the tags are, are ones and you'll get confused as to which one is which which is this one tagging back to that one or uh, that kind of thing okay so you see eight nine twelve other things all right uh, also, this is not an open seas thing, uh, but it's uh, a Python 3 thing, all right? Um, it does not use integer division, all right? Uh, so 1 over 4 evaluates to 0 in Tickle and Python 2. It evaluates to 0 0.25 in Python 3, all right? So uh, any of you who've used Tickle, um, open seas, whatnot, uh, you've probably come across this integer division it's not a problem it's a feature of the language and you've probably wasted hours of your life trying to figure out why your model is giving strange results you send it to me or frank or minji and after looking over your code we saw that uh, you're using integer division right. python 3 doesn't do that so uh, hip hip hooray right uh, thank you python 3 all right but uh, it'll save uh, hours of your life uh, in the future and those of you who know what i'm talking about uh, you know what I'm talking about, okay? So, uh, 1 over 4 in Python should evaluate to 0 0.25. Trying to run that cell. Uh, oops, sorry. We, we can edit this out of the... Uh, recorded session right uh, well anyway uh this is not running let's see okay well I'll just keep uh, let's keep going. All right. Uh, also, another another caveat uh, with OpenSea's Pi is you need to use floating point values uh, where floating point values are expected in your OpenSea's Pi commands. All right. Uh, you can run into an invalid data uh, problem. Okay. If there's uh, if you pass an integer into where a floating point value is expected. All right. Let's see. Hey Scott, or I'm yeah. sorry, Michael. You may try and restart your uh, kernel. Okay. Uh, not no, not this extreme, right? Uh, no, not not that extreme yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, restart kernel. All right. It said kernel ready, so. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. All right. There we go. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, this, this was actually part of the script uh, to uh, show some of the features of uh, OpenSea's Pi. Yeah, so one over four evaluates to 0 0.25, not zero, okay? Uh, here, uh, you need to use E equals 29,000 for E. If I change that to integer 29,000, you're gonna get an error, all right? Uh, this is something we'll, we'll fix in future versions of OpenSea's Pi, all right? But wherever a floating point value is expected, uh, you need to give a floating point value, dot zero or 29,000 dot or whatever the case may be, okay? Uh, also, you can pass vectors as list input uh, using native Python lists or NumPy arrays, all right? So if you're familiar with the path time series in OpenSeas, you can give it a list of time values and a list of uh, data points or force values for like a force time history, okay? So like, for example, I could set the uh, time in a list, say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and the force in an MP array, and then create an OpenSeas time series uh, with a command that looks something like this, okay? And you just need to dereference the lists using star. Okay, so star time, star force, all right? And that will create a path time series. Pretty nifty uh, little trick, right? 
Okay, but you can use, e again, you can use either native Python lists or NumPy arrays to uh, build up these, um, or to pass into list inputs, okay? All right, I just used one of each here for the sake of demonstration. Okay, so let's get into an example structural model. I don't wanna get into modeling details, all right, but I just wanna show you, uh, for this is a simple steel moment frame, 14 by 99 columns, 18 by 76 girders, dead load, seismic weights are shown there. Columns are 836 steel, beams are 8992 steel. All right, it's a 30 foot span, uh, 15 and 12 feet for the story heights, okay? So, um, you know, thanks to Sylvia Mazzoni, who I think is out there, you know, uh, she, she always puts the units in her tickle scripts. I adopted the same approach for Python, just to find uh, base units as variables, all right? Kips and inch are our base units. Then you can derive units and then define uh, gravitational constant. Everything in terms of the base units, all right? So you don't have to worry about uh, converting or adding magic numbers into your script, okay? Structural properties, E29,000 KSI, using that derived unit, all right? Yield strength for the columns and girders, 36 and 50 KSI, dead loads, kips per foot, all right? Seismic weights, 1,600 kips, okay? So generally, it's good practice to define your open seas model and analysis in one Jupyter Notebook cell, all right? So it's good to start the cell with uh, OPS wipe, all right? This will help avoid duplicate tag definitions when you rerun the cell, okay? And, but it's okay to define units and static properties in prior cells uh, as I did above, okay? So here's uh, one cell that contains the entire model definition for that frame in the above image, all right? Wipe, define your model, two degrees of freedom, three, or excuse me, two dimensions, three degrees of freedom per node, six nodes, all right, two of them are fixed at the base, all right, so fix node number and then 111 for completely fixed. Here we're defining the mass on the uh, nodes, putting half on each, each end of the girders, all right. Defining the columns, all right, again, these, this should all look like familiar uh, open seas tickle input. Again, I assume you've, you've seen stuff like this before, all right, so I'm not going to go into uh, details, but geometric transformation, co-rotational, uniaxial material, steel O2, WF section uh, using the 14 by 99 section properties, and then four force-based force beam column elements with gauss lobato integration. All right. Girders, same deal, using a linear transformation, section properties for the 18 by 76, and then two force based beam column elements uh, for the girders. All right. We can define gravity loads, those uniform loads, uh, as uh, LE loads. All right, so constant time series, plane load pattern, and then these element loads are reference values that go back to the uh, plane pattern. All right. Number, system constraints, convergence test. Uh, we're do, doing a load control for the gravity load analysis. All right, these are constant loads, so I don't need to specify a delta T. All right, we just start at zero, put, put on the loads, and then go from there. Static analysis, all right, analyze one. Once we do that, we'll switch to a pushover. All right, I'm gonna assume equal reference loads on each floor. All right, so second load pattern, this is linear. All right, linear time series, and then I'm using a uniform vertical distribution of lateral loads. All right, so node two, half of a reference load, and then three, half a unit of reference load, okay? I'm gonna do displacement control, all right, out to one foot roof, roof displacement, doing 100 steps. This gives us a step of one foot divided by 100 for our displacement control, all right? And then we can start doing the analysis and doing the plot. All right, so U plot, P plot are uh, NP arrays I'm gonna build up inside this loop, but this is a native Python loop to go over the number of steps. All right, inside for each step, I'm gonna analyze one. If that was successful, we'll append the current load factor for load pattern two and the roof displacement onto our p-plot and u-plot uh, in arrays. And then we'll use the pi-plot library to uh, plot the results right here in the notebook, okay? So let's run this entire cell. 
see what happens. Uh, feet. Oh, sorry, I forgot to run the uh, cells with the units. All right. Again, part of the script to show you uh, what can go wrong and how to fix it. All right. And now we can uh, rerun the cell, and boom, we have our pushover analysis, our load displacement uh, shown there, base shear and roof displacement. Okay. So that's a example of using PyPlot directly there with uh, NP or NumPy as well as OpenSys all together in one, uh, in one notebook, okay? All right, so in this next cell, I'm doing a nonlinear dynamic analysis. I'm putting it in a separate cell just for the sake of demonstration and the flow of this, um, of this webinar, all right? But if using OpenSys Pi locally, all right, the concept of cells go away and you can just have everything uh, together in one cell or one script, or whatever the case may be. All right, but picking up where we left off, we want now do a dynamic analysis for the same, for the same frame. We wanna remove the pushover load pattern, reset the model to its initial state, do the gravity load analysis again, all right? And then here I'm defining a time series and a uniform excitation with the Tabas fault normal uh, .txt file, which is stored locally in the my data directory on Jupyter Hub within my account. Okay, so you'll need your ground motion files or any other things you want to read from your script it needs to be in your local working working directory my data. Okay, then I'm going to plot the ground acceleration using NumPy's load text feature right, to get the information out of this ground motion file, and then plot the ground acceleration history. Right. Here I'm doing some pretty standard. Uh, computations to get some Rayleigh damping coefficients. So say just for example, we want 3% and 2% damping in modes one and two, all right? You can call the eigenvalue analysis from open seas and then do a little Linalg solve uh, within your Python script uh, to get the coefficients for Rayleigh damping, mass proportional, stiffness proportional, and then pass those into the uh, Rayleigh command for open seas. Okay, so you can pretty much copy and paste this into your own your own models, okay? And then declare a transient analysis, new Mark integrator, a constant acceleration, analysis time step, number of steps, okay? And then I'm just gonna build up an array uh, of plotting for time as well as uh, roof displacement to get the response history of the, the roof displacement and then plot it as a function of time here in uh, this cell, okay? So I need to rerun this to get the model defined, and I'm gonna run this cell to do the subsequent analysis. Takes it a few seconds to, to run, but here's the ground motion uh, plot, okay? You see a few open seas messages there, and then after a couple seconds, this uh, response history uh, pops up using PyPlot. So roof displacement, time. All right, so you see, you know, not much happening uh, initially, and then there's a large pulse in the ground acceleration, causes some permanent damage to the structure, and there's a residual displacement of about uh, seven, eight inches or so. Okay, so the nonlinear response is captured in the model uh, with this, or captured in the simulation, okay? Okay, you can also run OpenSeas Pi in a terminal at design safe, uh, I think, in the interest of time, I won't go into too much detail there, but the, the commands are are given there. So if you if you want to uh, run OpenSeas Pi, it's not in a Jupyter notebook, all right, but within a uh, your Python script, like for large jobs like batched analyses or parametric analyses, uh, you can do it within a terminal at Design Safe. Just go to New Terminal, all right. This is, if you're familiar with Linux, it's all there, CD, my data, it's all, it's all there. All right, so there's some commands in the, this notebook here for the presentation that tell you how to convert your notebook to a Python script and then how to run that uh, within that terminal. Okay, pretty handy, uh, actually. All right. The nice feature of uh, Design Safe is that they have the, the terminal capabilities there. Okay, so that'll conclude uh, this, this webinar and leave some time for questions. But again, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the efforts um, of Minji Zhu in developing OpenSeas Pi, as well as Frank McKenna 
for his guidance over the years uh, with Open Seas as well as uh, the Python implementation uh, within uh, within Open Seas. Okay. And then also acknowledge the Design Safe and TAC personnel who helped to make this webinar possible: uh, Ellen, Jamie Paget, uh, Tim Cockrell, Natalie Enriquez, as well as Charlie Day. Okay. Uh, so if there's any questions, you can ask them now or you can send me an email uh, with the address shown there. Okay. There's a couple questions showing up in the chat. I'm not sure if you can see those or not, Michael. Okay, yeah, I'm in full screen, so I've been blissfully unaware of uh, questions. Uh, so let's, let's see uh, if I stop sharing the screen. Yeah, so I see, I see some questions. Uh, Okay, so I you can hear still hear me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, let's see. I'll go from most recent to uh, well. Let me let me see if I can go to the the first questions. Yeah, it looks like the first question is from um, Ashrama or Arsh Ashrama. About eleven eleven thirty three. Uh, yeah, restart the kernel. Got that? Thank you. Oh, uh, at one forty four. And part of the script. So yeah. Uh, let's see, maybe a little bit after that. Yeah, she'd like to know, uh, or he, I'm so sorry, uh, that they're not a frequent user of OpenSeas, but I'd like to know if there are any special sections for non-prismatic shapes. Uh, yes, so you can do that with some of the, uh, the section definitions as well as the beam integration objects that I briefly discussed, uh, but I can uh, post more resources on that. But yes, that can be done. Uh, and I'll, I'll see, I see a question from Dustin about Dustin Cook about sharing the notebook and yes, I'll share this notebook. Uh, let's see, it's going through order. So this, some of these things may have already been answered, uh, by Charlie or others. Uh, so I apologize if I duplicate some answers. Um, oh yeah. Okay. I see the non-prismatic, um, large models, simple way for input. This is from Imho Hassan. 1144. Um, yes, there's some some functions for uh, discretizing frame elements uh, that can be made available. Um, there's also uh, yeah, there's some some meshing functions uh, that are within OpenSeas Pi, uh, but uh, to Mo Hassan's question, the answer is yes. Um, but we, we need to get those those thing, those resources uh, pulled together. Okay. Uh, Barbara Murray, is it possible to run OpenSeas in a parallel uh, environment like OpenSeas SP? Uh, Mump solver. Um, yes, I believe so. Uh, but I can I can follow up on on that. Yeah, so regarding the OpenSeas SP, I believe we do have that on Design Safe in one of our applications, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it could be run in that okay. application, but if, if the question is regarding OpenSeas Pi or the Python right. version and, along with OpenSeas SP, uh, I think that has a more, uh, has, has a longer answer. Exactly. Yeah. You can access OpenSeas SP by, uh, through a Jupyter Notebook by putting together the JSON object and firing it off to run in a parallel, uh, on our parallel system. But yeah, there's a lot more interest, intricacies involved in that. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sayad, uh, 1145, are the tickle materials included in the Pi version? So yes, all the structural and geotechnical material models are included in the Pi version of OpenSeas. All right, so all the uniaxial materials, ND materials, sections, uh, fibers, uh, PM4 sand, silts, all the PY springs for geotech type stuff. That's all that's all there included in the Pi version. Okay. Uh, Max Core uh, asked about non-typical steel sections, like box sections. So uh, for those, uh, you can use patches and layers within a general fiber section. I know in the example, I use wide flange sections and we we have a, a canned or encapsulated WF section command. Uh, 
which does all the patches and layers for you. All right, uh, but for boxes or uh, weak axis, uh, W shapes or HSS, whatever the case may be, you can use patches uh, for those. Um, parallel, we address that. Uh, for existing OpenSeas models written in Tickle, is there a way to call on those models directly through the Python API, or is it required that the model completely be rewritten in Python syntax? Um, I have a pretty simple converter that goes from Tickle to Python. If you have all of your elements and materials uh, written line by line, all right, but if you use like a Tickle loop and you have variable substitutions, it's pretty hard to go from Tickle to Python. There might be some more general stuff out there, all right, but if you're line by line, um, yes, we can convert that, all right. Um, for example, if you create a model in OpenSeas Navigator, uh, which outputs a line by line tickle file, you could take that and then use this tickle to Python converter uh, that, I, that I have and can make available. Um, that will then go to Python directly. Okay. But anything fancy, uh, it can't handle. Okay. Uh, Geotech capabilities are there, yes. Uh, this is from Habibola. Uh, Dustin Cook, again, uh, is the vision OpenSeas Pi will replace OpenSeas Tickle uh, that will lose support and community? Uh, the answer to that is, is no, uh, that we're not gonna abandon OpenSeas Tickle, uh, but it might be necessary to make some slight modifications to uh, how you use Tickle with OpenSeas, um, such that the forward, or going forward, the maintenance is a little more streamlined uh, for Frank and Minji and myself. And that can be uh, uh, documented in, in the future. All right, but Tickle is not going to go away. Uh, suggestions for people who began to just started using OpenSeas is from Magian. Or Mayan, uh, to everyone. Um, the OpenSeas Wiki is a great place to start. Uh, Minji's OpenSeas Pi uh, website. At readthedocs.io is also very good. There's some simple uh, starter examples there. Okay. Uh, modal damping, uh, yes, that's available in OpenSeas Pi. Uh, which version of OpenSeas is equal to OpenSeas Pi? Um, they're all coming through from the same source code. Uh, so that's a bit of a, a tricky question. So OpenSeas Pi is usually the latest. Uh, from GitHub, all right, so whenever Minji compiles a new module uh, with the PIP, that's what gets drawn into uh, Design Safe, right? for better or for worse, Charlie, uh, we might want to talk about that uh, a little bit, um, and how we can version stamp some of those a little more cleanly, all right. Um, OpenSeas Pi, can it be run outside of Design Safe using Jupyter or Spider? Uh, yes, uh, this is from Esnader Montoya, um, a question posed there. Um, yes, you can do PIP install on your local machine to run uh, OpenSeas Pi on Jupyter or Spider uh, locally. So that's a pretty straightforward uh, process. All right. Uh, can we add OpenSeas Pi to Microsoft VS Code software? Uh, not sure how to answer that. This is from Habibola Sadegi about Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Oh, this is for the compiling the projects in Visual Studio. Uh, yes, I believe that's there. Uh, we can address that through follow-up uh, to compile the OpenSeas Pi module uh, from Visual Studio. Yes, that's, that's doable, all right. Um, Mac OS version, uh, that should be coming out shortly. We just, there were a lot of library issues that needed to be resolved on that. I think we figured that out with the help of uh, Terrier uh, Halkis up at UBC in Vancouver. Uh, following up on a previous question, how can we access a parallel OpenSeas Pi and get documentation on that? Yeah, we'll need to provide some documentation on uh, using OpenSeas Pi uh, with the parallel version. Okay, uh, so we'll, all of these questions should be documented within the recording. Is that right, Charlie? Uh, so we can go back and uh, kind of follow up on specific questions. Is that? Yeah, they are. There's also a um, 
the, a text version of all the chat as well that we can share with you, Michael, and okay. uh, get some further answers in. Okay. Hopefully these uh, ver verbal answers have been uh, sufficient, uh, but we'll, we'll follow up on uh, the more specific questions from the, the group chat. Okay, um, so I guess that's probably it. There's probably a few more minutes for questions. Um, one more just came in from Abiham. Abhinav. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, but I, I, I don't know if I, is there any audio questions or if it's all through chat uh, or. Uh, yeah, usually yeah. chat works best for questions, so. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, if I don't uh, hear anything else or uh, see any more chat questions, I think we'll sign off. Uh, DLL uh, from Barbara Murray. Uh, yeah, we can follow that, uh, follow up on that uh, as well. Um, fix for IMK hinges, uh, that's another, another path uh, we need to go down, I think, to get some updated uh, source code in there for uh, the modified Ibarra Medina Carwinkler hinges. I believe that's what uh, Barbara Murray's asking about. Um, yeah. That could be a whole nother webinar in and of itself. Uh, right, Barbara? Okay. So, uh, at any rate, uh, I guess I'll sign off um, and we'll close out the, uh, the webinar. And again, we'll follow up with answers to questions. Um, I see the uh, the wrap up slide is there uh, from from Charlie. So you can contact uh, Charlie for Jupiter Hub Design Safe issues. Uh, fill out tickets if you have any Open Seas Pi uh, specific questions. You can contact me uh, with the uh, email address provided uh, at the end of the notebook. Okay. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, uh, it was everybody. a pleasure. And uh, okay, everyone has a great summer. Thank you very much, Michael. Yeah, have a great summer, everyone. Uh, we're on quarters. We still have three more weeks of classes here. So we just wrapped uh, up. We'll, uh, but we'll we'll be uh, laughing at you in August, I guess, uh, <laughs> and into early September. Okay. So uh, thank you. And, Thanks, everyone. Have a great right. have a great weekend. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.